Yo, what's good? Thank you for tuning in to another Photoshop tutorial. This one right here is a speed tutorial slash kind of little explanation of what I got going on. If I feel like talking, I'm going to talk. If I don't, I'm, I won't. You feel me? But this is a special one to me because I'm a fan of this guy, 318 Lil O. Man, um, I watch his interviews. I, I watch him get up every day grinding. I mean, out of control grind, man. So I watch him on Facebook. He on live on Facebook all the time, man. Y'all go check him out. He dope. He a dope producer. Dope beat producer, man. He a dope artist, man. Um, and I'm working on this single for him. It meant, it meant a lot to him. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to put my heart in it. Like, I put my heart in everybody's stuff, but something like this, I always try to, uh, you feel me? So let's go jump into the video. You feel me? Let's go get started. So I'm basically laying out my guys right now. Um, uh, I am going to do a video on guys and kind of scrape the surface of them. But right now, I'm just doing me a little, uh, little guy. This is for a single cover. Single cover is always 16 by 16. Uh, that's just like the standard. Um, the standard, you know what I'm saying? If you want to do something bigger, they might allow it a, a, a list, I guess. Different sites. But from my personal experience, and I've been doing this for some years now, um, 16 by 16, yeah. <laughs> It's an urge. Truth be told, every champion has felt it. Every president has felt it. Every king has felt it. Every lion has felt it. Every winner has felt it. Every soldier has felt it. Every victorious person has felt it. The urge to quit. Don't you give up on your dream. I don't care if you don't have the money, you don't have the help, and you don't have the family for it, and you don't have the background for it, and you don't have the friends for it, don't you give up on your dream, don't you do it, don't you do it, don't you do it. It may take you twice as long, you may have to take courses and classes, you might not read as fast, you might not move as quick, you might not have as much, but don't you quit. Don't you quit. Don't you quit. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. As weak as you are, as tired as you are, as many mistakes as you made, you do make a difference. There is something they would lose if you were not there. There was something that they would miss if you were not there. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. Keep hopping. It's for people that are trying to hop their way back home. Come hell or high water, doing the best they can with what they got. That's, that's who we are, doing the best we can with what we got. And we may not break any ribbons and we may not get any trophies, but if we can learn how to hang on in there, we'll be all right. I will not lie to you, I feel like going on. But I have seen days I did not want to get out of the bed, didn't want to put on clothes, and didn't even feel like brushing my teeth. I've seen days so dark that I just wanted to keep driving, and I didn't even care where I ended up or what you called me. They came, and they passed. And they came to pass. I kept the faith. I kept it. I lost a lot of stuff. I lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of strength. I lost a lot of courage. I lost a lot of time. I lost a lot of money, but I kept down on my knees. I was still believing. Broke, I was believing. Lonely, I was believing. Betrayed, I was. If you lose a job, keep the faith. If you lose a spouse, keep the faith. If you bury your child, keep the faith. If you have to downsize, keep the faith. If you have to move in with your mama, keep the faith. If you're at your wit's end, keep the faith. If you have to catch the bus, keep the faith. If you have to dumb, keep the faith. If you get sick, keep the faith. 
If you lose your kidneys, keep the faith. If you got heart trouble, keep the faith. You might not get a new heart, but you gotta keep your faith. as mentally retarded, put back from the fifth grade into the fourth grade, and stayed in that category until I got out of high school. I don't have any college training, but I met a high school teacher who one day changed my life. I was waiting on another student, and when he came in, he said to me, young man, go to the board and write what I'm about to tell you. And I said, I, I can't do that, sir. He said, why not? I said, I'm not one of your students. He said, it doesn't matter, follow my directions now. I said, I can't do that, sir. He said, why not? I said, because I'm educable, mentally retarded. And he came from behind his desk and he looked at me. He said, don't ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. And as he talked, my heart began to beat fast. Tears began to run by my eyes and, and I was in the back just listening to him because the speech he was giving, that speech was for me. And he said, Les Brown, he said, if you want to do anything worthwhile in life, you've got to be hungry. I told Mr. Washington I wanted to become a disc jockey. And so I started working to develop myself. He said, I want you to practice every day being a disc jockey. I said, but I don't have any job now. He said, it doesn't matter. He said that it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. And as I was working to develop myself, I applied for a job as a disc jockey, WMB on Miami Beach. I went to a guy named Milton Butterball. I said, how you doing, Mr. Butterball? I'd like to get a job as a disc jockey. He looked at me, he said, do you have any broadcast background? I said, no, sir, I don't. Do you have any journalism background? I said, no, sir, I don't. He said, we don't have any jobs available. I said, yes, sir. I went back to Mr. Washington and I told him, he said, don't take it personally. He said, most people are so negative, they will have to say no seven times before they say yes. He said, go back again. So I went back again. I said, how you doing, Mr. Butterball? My name is Les Brown. He said, I know what your name is. What do you want? I said, I'd like to know whether or not you have any jobs at this jockey, sir. He said, didn't I just tell you yesterday we didn't have any jobs? I said, yes, sir, but I know whether or not somebody got laid off or somebody was fired, sir. He said, no one was laid off or fired. Now get on out of here. I came back the next day like I was seeing you for the first time. I said, hello, Mr. Butterball, how are you? 
He looked at me with rage. He said, go get me some coffee. I said, yes, sir. And I went to get him some coffee. After a while, I would get their lunch and dinner, and I would go in the control rooms and take the disc jockeys their food, and I would not leave until they would ask me to leave. One Saturday afternoon, while I was at the radio station, a guy named Rock was drinking while he was on the air. I was the only one there looking at him through the control room windows, walking back and forth, young, ready, and hungry. Pretty soon the phone rang and it was the general manager. And I answered the phone, I said, hello. He said, Les, this is Mr. Klein. I said, I know. He said, Rock can't finish his program. I said, I know. He said, would you call one of the other DJs in? I said, yes, sir. I hung the phone up. I said, now he must be think I'm crazy. I called my mom and my girlfriend, Cassandra. I said, y'all turn up the radio and come out on the front porch. I'm about to come on the air. I waited for about 20 minutes and I called him back. I said, Mr. Klein, I can't find nobody. He said, young boy, do you know how to work the controls? I said, yes, sir. He said, go in there and don't say nothing here. I said, yes, sir. I couldn't wait to get behind those controls. I put on an old Stevie Wonder record called Fingertips. I sat down behind that turntable. I said, look out, this is me, LB, Triple P. Les Brown, your platter playing papa. There were none before me, and there will be none after me. Therefore, that makes me the one and only. Young and single and love to mingle, certified, bona fide, and dubbly qualified to bring you satisfaction, a whole lot of action. Look out, baby, I'm your love man. I was hungry. I was hungry. You got to be hungry. Begin to know that you have greatness within you. And if just one of you here begin to envision yourselves as being blessed and highly favored to reach your goals, if just one of you capture the essence of what that means, that you have greatness within you and a responsibility to manifest that greatness, that you can make your parents proud, you can make your school proud, you can touch millions of people's lives and the world will never be the same again because you came this way. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen, coming to speak to people. And I was facing financial difficulties in my own life. I was behind on my bills and my dreams and I'm saying to them, you can live your dream. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen. It was very difficult to pick myself up each day believing that I could do it. There were times that I doubted myself. I used to ask myself, can I do this? And something said within me, you're the one. Don't give up on your dream. By continuing to push forward, by continuing to run toward my dream, that one day I would have my own talk show. It's a long shot, ladies and gentlemen, from Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor never knowing my mother or father. It's a long shot being here with you today in this dome in Atlanta. It's a long shot. No college training, labeled, educable, mentally retarded, but I kept running toward my dream. Don't stop. Don't stop running toward your dream. I fought to get to work. I fought to get up on my feet. I fought to stand. I fought to carry on. I fought to love. I fought to live. I fought to get out of the bed. I fought with my fears, my doubts, my anxieties, my insecurities. I fought with haters, liars, backbiters, and betrayers. I even had to fight with family. And many times I laid in the bed. I couldn't go to sleep because I was fighting with myself. I fought. High five somebody and tell them I fought a good fight. I mean, I fought such a good fight that when I look at what other people call a fight, 
what they call a fight is what I call normal. My whole perception of what a fight is has been revolutionized. That's not a fight.